Can I retire at 55 years old with $1.6 million saved for retirement? That's what we're gonna look at today on the Your Financial EKG YouTube channel. I have a client, he's 53 years old. He's got $1.4 million saved for retirement. He lives in New Mexico asking the question, if I retire in two years with a projected retirement savings of $1.6 million, is my money gonna last forever? And what about taxes? Should I do Roth conversions? Should I be looking at other ways to save on taxes? And how should I invest going into retirement? That's what we're gonna look at today on the channel. I've got three specific scenarios to go through with you today. One scenario is gonna be just if I retire at 55, how long is my money gonna last? The second scenario is gonna be, let's look at doing those Roth conversions if all else stays equal. And number three is, let's look at Roth conversions if taxes go up. You ready? Let's get into the software right now. All right, so here's our three scenarios. Retire at 55, no Roth conversions, five-year Roth conversion, taxes go up. That's gonna be the last scenario we look at. And five-year Roth conversion. So let's go to the first scenario, retire at 55. And here we go, we got Jerry. Jerry lives in New Mexico and he's 53 years old. Jerry's gonna retire in February of 2024. Currently makes about $10,000 monthly, so that's about $120,000 is his annual salary. Now, Social Security, we've looked at a couple different scenarios and I'll show you that here on the channel, but we're gonna look at taking Social Security at 62. That actually elongates his retirement income the most. Now, remember with Social Security, you take it at 62, you get 70% of your full retirement benefit. You wait till 67, you're actually gonna get 100% of your full retirement benefit. And if you take it at 70, if you're an overachiever, a broccoli eater, then you get 124% of your full retirement benefit. You can take it any time between 62 and 70. You gotta make a decision that fits your retirement plan. For Jerry, when we've gone through the different scenarios, 62 makes the most sense. So we're gonna start there. He's gonna get 70% of his full retirement benefit. So from age 55 to 62, most of his retirement income is going to come from his retirement assets. And then Social Security is gonna kick on. All right, so Social Security, 62. So let's look at assets. So here's what we've got in assets. So Jerry's got a non-qualified account with $475,000 in it. That's like a taxable brokerage account. He's got that at TD Ameritrade. He's got a SEP IRA of $205,000, which he's putting in $2,500 per month into his SEP IRA. He has an IRA with TD Ameritrade at $475,000. He has a Roth IRA, our IRA, so he's already got a Roth with TD Ameritrade at $222,433. And he's got money in the bank of about $50,000. So all in total, he's got about $1.4 million in assets. Now from a tax classification standpoint, because this is what he's concerned about, 47% of his money is qualified, meaning pre-tax. So all money that's pre-tax is tax deferred. Tax deferred means you're gonna pay taxes on this money at some point. If it's an IRA, a 401k, a 403b, or a TSP, you're going to pay a required minimum distribution at some time in your life, whether that's 73 or 75, depending on your age. So for Jerry, he's concerned about taxes. So can we get more of this red off the screen and get it over here to more green? So we have 15% Roth IRA. We wanna try to increase the dark green on this screen. Now from a risk standpoint, risk is also something that he's very concerned about. Well, currently we've got all of his assets, so 96% of his assets are at risk of market loss. Now there's different uh, classes of investments inside of his retirement investing account. So AT&T stock doesn't carry the same risk as Tesla stock, but even in his risk allocation, all of the money is at risk of loss, okay? So he's got 96% of that. So he's concerned. So what we normally do is we do a risk assessment. So what a risk assessment allows me to do is ask a few questions and the program populates 
how much he should have at risk versus how much he should have safe or as conservative as possible, okay? So what dollar amount would you like to keep in liquid accounts such as checking savings or money markets? For him, 50,000 is all he wants to keep in the bank and that's a good round number for him. It's about six months of expenses, so he's good right there. How many years can you let your assets grow before having to take withdrawals? This helps us determine how long you might need to leave your money invested. So we know two years, he's 53 years old, we're gonna to go to 55. So two years, so zero to two, is the time horizon before he's gonna to have to start taking withdrawals off of this money. What statement best describes how you feel about savings and risk? I do not wanna see my principal amount decrease. I cannot afford a significant loss. If my interest or rate of return stays ahead of inflation, I don't want exposure to risk. If I can make a moderate interest or rate of return on my investments, I can withstand some market fluctuations. So that's one we're gonna to go to a little bit more moderate because he's 55. And what would you consider a reasonable interest rate on your investments? I'm gonna say four to six. And the reason I like four to six is because the market's averaged 8% over the last 50 years. That's with inflation included. We're gonna back up two percentage points to six. And I'm gonna show you in the software where we're really gonna back up later in life. Okay, so hold on for that. And risk tolerance, which one of the possible outcomes on a one-year investment indicates the amount of risk you would be comfortable taking. So best case, 102,000 or a $2,000 gain. Worst case, a loss of zero. Best case, you make $4,000. Worst case, you lose four. Best case, you make eight, you lose eight. Best case, you make 12, you lose 12. Best case, you make 16, you lose 16. For him, again, we're still kind of moderate. So 10 to 12 is, is okay. So we're gonna save and close that. So when we look at the risk classification for him, 58% of his money needs to be in this green area and 38% needs to be in this red area. So that's something we can work on as we go through the EKG, as we go down the line. It, this is not gonna be a situation where that's gonna determine how long his money's gonna last. It's just a, a differentiate him. Where do we need to situate? Where do we need to set his retirement investments? And that needs to adjust as time goes on, the closer you get to 60, 70, 80, your investments need to adjust with your age, okay? Now, from a rate of return, we're gonna look at a portfolio weight of 5.79%. That means the investments that are in the market are gonna get a 5.79% overall rate of return. And I'm actually gonna show you, we're gonna go a little bit more conservative because Jerry's kind of a conservative guy. So before retirement, so for the next two years, we're gonna project his investments earning 6% a year. After retirement, from 55 on, we're gonna show a 4.4% rate of return. So we're actually gonna go back farther on the conservative scale. And the reason for this is he's just a conservative guy. And so I don't wanna plug in 6% the rest of his life if that's not what in actuality is gonna happen because there's a big difference in 4% and 6% with compound interest. Remember, God's greatest gift outside of Jesus is compound interest. And so the longer your investments have in the market, the greater compound interest is gonna work in your favor. So if we're compounding 6%, that's gonna be a lot more money than if we're compounding four. So we have to project that out in the financial EKG. If you wanna contact me, all the information is below. Thank you for watching, God bless, bye-bye.